All righty. So after that, I must ask, uh, what was it like being in victory lane as a champion in, for Trans Am? You know, it was pretty cool because it happened. I, I you know, it, it was it was really weird. So, so we clinched the championship. I think a race before, before the last race, or maybe it was the last race, and we were at Watkins Glen, and I wanted to win there so bad. The last three laps of the race, uh, I, I, I was leading the race and I didn't care about championship. I'm, I'm in the moment. I'm going to, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm doing everything to win this race. Like you do right. Every time you race. So, mm -hmm. um, and something happens at the end where, and I wish I knew the guy's name. His dad was there. He wound up winning the race and, you know, congratulations to him. But there was something that happened where we both dove into the bus stop. And I mean, it, it, it was a great race at the end. We were, we were side by side going into the bus stop and he got pushed out or I don't know if he just didn't, I, I don't think I was on the inside and I think he tried to outbreak me and he didn't make it and went into the bus stop. I mean, went to the, to, to that, you know, he didn't make the bus stop. So you're supposed to stop and go. He kind of rolled and go and still wound up ahead of me. So I, and I was after his butt. I was after him. And then we come in. I finished second, which was great, right? We got the podium. But I'm sitting there on the radio going, and I was almost, I was kind of upset. But for some reason, I was like, you know, something's going on here. And then I get the radio, and they said, Tommy, you clinched the championship. So let's just let this lie. Let, let this lie. And I even remember saying, yeah, but I want to win Watkins Glen, you know? <laughs> and... Uh, Luckily enough, so I won the championship at Watkins Glen in 2009. And luckily, a few years later, I, th I think maybe just like a couple few years ago, I was in one of the most intense battles with uh, Loshak, Lawrence Loshak. And uh, we had the, the most amazing battle and we were teammates and we finished first and second with me being ahead, you know. So I did get that championship, but I did get that Watkins Glen win. Okay. Yeah, that's really cool that you win it, that you won a championship. And that's just the racer's mentality. Even when you do something, you want more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm always like that when I finish second. I'm like, <laughs> you know, Could have been first. <laughs> Could have been first. You know, what, what, what could, you know, even if you finish seventh. What could you have done to finish sixth? Yeah, and it's the same for the entire field. As as the enti right. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so after that, uh, what was driving for Tommy Baldwin like in your first cup start? Well, first of all, I had no idea what I was doing. So, I mean, the cars, the, I think that might have been my first. I did a couple of Xfinity or then whatever it was called then. Uh, I did a couple of Xfinity races, I think, beforehand. Uh, we were at um, Montreal, I think. And I started like 39th or something like that. I started like 39th. It was the most, it was the longest. I mean, I've done the 24 hours of Daytona. I've done like long distance races. This race, it was hot. The car was, you know, maybe a 38th place oval car. And we wrote, we drove that thing up to 19th or 17th or 18th, uh, avoided a crash, went all the way back to 30th. And by the end of the race came back to 19th, but it, or, or I don't know, we, we got a top 20, but that race was with a red flag and everything it was like three hours long. And so after that, I said, Hey, maybe I can try a cup car, but I never was able to test a cup car. I never did a test or anything like that. Maybe I did, but I don't think I was a cup car that I tested. Anyway, so my first, I think my first experience was with Tommy Baldwin uh, or maybe my second experience there, but he had a pretty darn good car, you know, for being a really small team. You're, you know, the top 20 in cup, maybe the top 25 in cup. I don't know what they're spending a weekend. It could be three, four hundred thousand dollars a weekend, you know, when you split it up for 36 races and the budgets that they spend. Mm -hmm. And so I, I I think Tommy Baldwin and I put a deal together where I think we spent what Jimmy Johnson spent on catering. 
you know, so, <laughs> so, so, you know, he, he, he was in my ear the whole time. He got me to a good position. We were really in a good position. And, you know, at the end of the race, there was, a, I was on old tires. Somebody was coming through the field on new tires and just barely, you know, on the worst, on the dirt, uh, where the S's are just a little, just, a, it was a little bump, you know, they didn't mean to do it, but um, you know, it, it was a great experience and my sponsors loved it. That was the most important part. We got, we got some air time, we got some TV time and qualifying. And uh, so in, in the race, we got a little time because, you know, we, we, were, we weren't exactly up in the front with Jimmy Johnson. <laughs> no, but I was going to ask uh, those movies that you put on your cars, uh, are they sponsored by you or who are they? No, sponsored? those are the studios. The studios. Okay. Yeah. 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 So I make a deal with them. You know, I, 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 I think I, I think I've uh, in Trans Am especially. I think I, I've done over, oh, it's got to be over seventy five movies in my career. Seventy five different movies on the car, and uh, you know, then you know other types of sponsors come in. So like right now, and I got to mention right now that got a second place in the. Well, you're going to ask your question, so we can talk about. But right now, I'm so happy to have Luke be part of the Lucas Oil family which is on the Trans Am car right now. And I thought we did pretty good last year. You know, we were runner up in the championship. Uh, Ernie Francis Jr. won the championship. Uh, heat my hats off to him and the team. But uh, we're coming after it. We're coming after him next year. That's good to hear. So uh, just curious about Trans Am. Uh, what, what exactly is represented by Trans Am 1 and Trans Am 2 and 3? Uh, what is that about? Well, uh, there's just uh, the, the top level Trans Am car is called the TA car. It's Trans Am. Oh. Okay. You want to call it one, you can, but there, it's just Trans Am. That, that is the pinnacle and the highest level of performance, right? Okay. So it is, it, it, they are the fastest cars. Uh, they have the most horsepower. They do things. They do everything better. Okay. Right. TA2 is then, you know, maybe it's, it's, it, it might, and, and you know, TA2 is a great field. They got a great field. And um, the one thing about TA2 is that it's uh, the budgets are a little, are, 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 are less. I don't know how much less, but, you know, I, I would say, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the budgets are less because they're, uh, they're more specced. Right. So, they do everything in TA2 to bring down the cost of racing. You know, today to go racing is, is ast you know, it's when you look at all the other series out there, it's astronomical compared to what I used to be able to jump in and go drive a car and go get some sponsorship, you know, and go race a car, you know. Now, when you look at some of the series out there, it's just, it's crazy. And I think that the most amazing race cars that you can drive today with no driver aid, no traction control. Uh, you still got to shift the car, no ABS brakes, and probably some of the highest horsepower cars in the world. The best cars in the world is a TA car. That sounds really fantastic. I've always said that, you know, going fast is very addicting. Like, at the start of this year, I went, I tried an electric bike on a road in Scottsdale and I was immediately addicted to it. Uh, be careful. I can't believe how fast those little bikes are, man. Zero to 30 and nothing. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. But yeah, I, I was taken off guard by it, but in a good way. <laughs> yeah. So what happened at Watkins Glen that that when you got into that accident that sidelined you from the next Xfinity race, what happened? Okay. Now I'm remembering. Yeah. I, you know, those cars are so hard to stop. There was uh, I don't remember the drivers, but some of the, the, I mean, we were running probably mid pack 15th or something like that. And um, just kind of cruising, you know, it's, it's, you know, it wasn't towards the end of the race at all yet. But there were some really aggressive restarters, and um, uh, they tried to uh, do some passing going up the S's. And uh, I'm coming, I'm just starting, I'm, I'm just on my way into the S. By the time I got to the first, 
by the time I got to the first corner, the spotter said, there's a, a big one, big one, right? Stop, stop. But by the time you try to stop these 3,200 pound cars, you know, on tires this wide, uh, I was already in it. And what happened was I was uh, uh, just before, you know, I saw I was going to hit the guardrail. I was, you know, I was just trying to steer out of it. And at the last minute, I was going to take my hand off the wheel. Uh, but I didn't realize that was so just this much to the guardrail with the wheel cock, the guardrail hit the wheel and turned the wheel and, you know, it dislocated my shoulder and it wasn't actually dislocated in the race car. Um, I was in the ambulance. I was okay, you know, but I, I felt the pain in my shoulder or my shoulder blade. I didn't know what it was. And so I was trying, I go, I felt like a, like something that was a bump in my back. So I reached over to my other side to say, do I have that same bump? And my shoulder popped out <laughs> when I did it. And I just out of shock, I popped it back in. I didn't tell any, I didn't tell anybody. They said, are you okay? I'm, I'm fine. But obviously, cause I didn't want it. Cause I had a race the next, I had a race the next uh, weekend or the weekend after. Right. Yeah. And so I tried to get cleared for it. I tried to get, I went to the doctor, but they did the safe thing. I couldn't race until um, the Xfinity race at Road America. And I had a race with a brace kind of, yeah, that was a bummer. Cause I really wanted to go to mid Ohio. I, I, I love that track. And I, you can take a, you can take a, a, you can take a small team car there and you can make hay, you know, you can do well there. <laughs> so what is racing at Circuit Jillsville Noob like? Incredible. Uh, I've done a couple of, I, obviously I did the Xfinity race there and uh, I've done a couple of Trans Am races there. Uh, the fans, you know, I love racing in Canada. Anywhere you go to Canada, you know, on the West Coast, the, you know, the Mid and the East Coast, just, just incredible. I love racing in Canada. And in fact, Trans Am is going to most sport this year. So we haven't been there in a long time. And that is a wicked, wicked fast track. But the Circus Gilles Neuve is uh, such a technical track. It's, it's just a great track. It's beautiful. You know, some good racing there. I've had some great races there. I think, I, I think in the Trans Am race, um, I think it was one of the last Trans Am races before it, it, it took a hiatus for a little bit. I was leading that race for a little while. And then I, then I, then I ran out of talent, made a mistake. And, uh, Jenna Losey passed me and Klaus Graf passed me. And I, yeah, I was, I was, I, ugh, I wanted to win that race real bad. <laughs> yeah. That that's cool that they're going to most sport. That's going to be a lot yeah. of fun. Yeah. Have you ever raced most sport before? Yes. I won there. Aha, uh -huh, that's even better. If you can yeah. win at most sport, you'll be fast anywhere. And 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 I, I've been on the podium there with a Trans Am car, but I got the opportunity to run with um, Genelosi's team, Paul Genelosi's team, uh, RSR. And uh, this guy that I, I did my job by maintaining the position that we had. And I brought it back and I gave it to this guy that we all know and love, Bruno Jonquera. And he just was a monster and he won that race, I should say. He helped me win the race, but he won that race for the team. And the team made a really great call, a strategy call. So, you know, I, I did my time, I held my position and then they came in and I'm not, if, if I remember, I don't remember what it was, but they did something out of the ordinary that no one else did. And boom, it, it, it just got us. It was when you win, everything that happened was perfect, right? Can't get any better. Yeah, for sure. So this is the last question I have on the list. But uh, what was it like promoting the Alvin and the Chipmunks squeakquel? Yeah, I've had some corny movies. Uh, any movie that I did i did it with i did I, I went all out for it worked very hard for the sponsors or whatever movie it was but i got more i got more i got more attention from some of the kids movies that you know the ice age 
the Alvin and the Chipmunks, all the kids would come by and they, you know, I made little hero cards with the car on it, you know, and yeah, that I, I think the most fun with those type of movies on the car were the kids. That's really cool. I, I have an autograph from you that I got a few years back somewhere in my autograph collection and it has a photo of your Ice Age car on it. And oh, what, yeah. what you autographed for me was you're the best fan ever. And so you are, we, hey man, we thank you for for uh, doing this. I just I watched the Tony Ave one, and uh, I hope Tony shows up for a couple races because I love racing that guy. Like you want to beat that guy so bad, you know. And you know we went back and forth. In fact, he, I won. Him and I pretty much were the. Him and I in two thousand nine and two thousand ten were pretty much the rivals. At that point, there was a few other folks that could have won the championship, but it came down, I think, both years to him and I, or I'm pretty sure. And uh, I got it in nine, and then he kicked our ass in, oops, he kicked our butts in 2010. No problem. Swearing is allowed on my channel, except for a few words. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> you're you're really cool. And I'm glad that I got to interview both you and Tony Ave. Like you guys are the most notable sports car drivers I can think of. Oh well, thank you. I appreciate that. And you know what? Just gotta thank you. I gotta thank Lucas Oil. We're gonna um be running for the championship in 2020 this year, 2021. And God bless everybody out there. Yeah, thank you so much, Tommy. God bless you.